Before this week, I wouldn't be surprised if you had no idea that your energy bill is made up of around 23% of green levies, an unwelcome stealth tax. This week's worrying electricity crisis has been prompted by wholesale prices for gas surging 250% since January and going up 70% since August. Millions of households across Great Britain are already facing a 12% hike to their bills from October when the government's higher price cap comes into first force. Concernedly, by April, some households could be paying twice as much as they do now. There's one obvious solution that Boris Johnson could enact to get Brits through this energy price hike drama. Scrap the green tax. Yesterday, a Downing Street spokesman ruled out a move to, rem uh, to, to get rid of the levy, saying it is an important part of driving our energy supply to renewables. But that's not good enough for many Tory MPs who are well aware of just how badly these dizzying price rises will hit their constituents' pocketbooks, not to mention the already looming and unexpected increase in national insurance. As Craig McKinlay, who heads the Net Zero Scrutiny Group of Tory MPs, told the Mail Online, we cannot have these ridiculous prices being passed on to consumers because we will then have energy poverty this winter. It is very obvious we have to get rid of green levies temporarily or permanently. And for me, that would be a short-term solution at least. But in the medium term, more must be done as a matter of urgency to boost our domestic gas supplies. We cannot be this reliant on international bad actors like Russia anymore. Long term, it's fine for Boris, who's, as we know, is wooing the world in New York at the moment to try and focus on clean and green energy. But there's a crisis at home, Boris, and immediate action is required. Perhaps it was Michael Deacon of the Daily Telegraph who summed up the absurdity of the situation best today, writing... Sometimes the news can be confusing. Right now, Boris Johnson is in America, telling everyone they're producing too much carbon dioxide. While back here, his ministers are telling us we aren't producing enough. One cause the Prime Minister has been completely right to support from New York is the Daily Mail's campaign to allow all of us to see a GP face-to-face -face whenever we need. He told the newspaper today, the public rightly may choose to want to see their GP face-to-face and GP practices should be making that facility available to their patients. But I know, and I know from personal experience, actually, that's simply not possible at the moment, no matter what the surgeries say. In fact, the statistics back it up. Only 57% of GP appointments are now face-to-face -face compared with 80% before the pandemic. That's only going to make the ticking cancer time bomb worse and put more pressure on the NHS in the near future. GPs must stop the reliance on telephone triage and open their damn doors. I suggested recently that the way we're going, the first thing that will happen the moment a newborn exits their mother's womb and enters the world will be that they're jabbed with a COVID vaccine. And sure enough, today Pfizer says its vaccine is effective and safe for children aged 5 to 11. And the company is seeking the go-ahead from regulators to use the shot in kids in that age group as soon as possible. Healthy children are at a minuscule, an absolutely minuscule risk from COVID. But there are rare side effects from the vaccine. The best thing that we could do for society is to build up natural immunity in young people. We don't talk about that enough. And stop the march to jab five-year-olds. And finally, how refreshing. A lovey actor has just gone against the woke orthodoxy and admitted there shouldn't be a female James Bond. And what's much more significant is that that actor is James Bond himself. Yep, Daniel Craig, who had previously opened up the possibility of being replaced by a female Bond. But in a new interview today in the Radio Times, Craig said, the answer to that is very simple. There should simply be better parts for women and actors of colour. Why should a woman play James Bond when there should be a part just as good as James Bond, but for a woman? He's right.